students have to train ourselves to have many natives. I'm a native. You're a native. We are a cop. I'm a cop. We have to train ourselves to lead. So, Jared Ball, would you come to the mic, please, and have your four minutes? Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I know for many of you this is our, our first meeting and I am deeply appreciative uh, for having been invited and included. Uh, my name is Jared Ball. Uh, I hail from Washington, D.C. And uh, I'm a member of the D.C. State of the Green Party and I'm very happy to be here to let you know why I want to be your nominee for President of the United States. Um, very simply, uh, being 35, approaching 36, part of the hip-hop generation, very involved in those politics, I want to help use that as a vehicle to reach many of the people that are most disaffected by the society. I want to help build a campaign that will focus on 2008 as the 40th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King. Uh, and the assassination not only of Dr. King, but of the true radical politics of Dr. King and what we as a party can rebuild were we to get behind such a campaign. Uh, and I don't mean when I say Dr. King, the frozen in, in time, I have a dream speech. I mean the real Dr. King of where do we go from here, chaos or community. His last full length book, where he talked about many of the things that we need to do as a society to reorganize ourselves out of the white supremacy that continues to infect even our left and most progressive elements, out of the militarism, and out of the capitalism that is dominating and punishing all of us as human beings in this country and in this world. Uh, I want to team up with my man, Head Rock who will be here performing, I believe, tomorrow night. And I encourage you all to go check that out and see the kind of capital resistance uh, style presentations that we are able to give that will penetrate into new communities, again, most disaffected, most ignored by electoral politics, those who have chosen in them their own right to remove themselves from electoral politics. We want to challenge them to get involved. We want to bring in the tens of millions of people eligible but not voting currently right now. We want to focus on the indigenous communities, the black communities, Latino communities, poor working white communities, and let them know that we are a party that will represent their genuine interests if they decide to come out of their non-participation in electoral politics and vote with us. To say, we now have an option for you that lets you know that the vote you are not currently using, you might as well cast with us because were, would we be to, uh, were, were we to be elected, we would be able to genuinely follow through on the interests as you have defined them, as we as a collective have defined them. Uh, so that was the, that's another reason why I want to be involved as well. Uh, and I want to do it again to update and revive the true radical politics that are beneath all of us, that's, that have us all in this room right now, to re-ascend uh, a black radical politics and let many of our, our uh, again, most disaffected groups know that they can come into this party as equal members with power and rights and able to build with our progressive brothers and sisters of all the other nationalities represented in this room and bring that back to the fore, where we can be reascend ourselves to the leadership of the radical politics of this world, to bring back the, the Kwame Therese and the Malcolm X, one minute, thank you very much, and bring back the Malcolm X ideology of right now. Everything that is on the Green Party platform, it should be the minimum of a decently run society, and it is already past due, it is already late. We need to have that stuff right now. So this is not about uh, just thinking about, well, part of it is thinking about organizing and building a party over the, uh, uh, the next few years and succeeding generations to be involved, but with an attitude that what we are arguing for is just right now. We don't have to sit back and say, we will take, as Nader Nona said in the video, incremental steps forward and take that as being seen as progress. Malcolm X was right. We are the community that has had a knife plunged in our back nine inches, and we are being asked to thank people who remove it simply five. We want to say not only should you remove it and heal the wound, but heal the wound of this country and this world, and we are the party that can do it. And I'm Jared Ball. I want to be your nominee. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, and I realize
realized I didn't introduce myself. I'm Barbara Rogers Hendricks, Green Party of Florida, and a member of the Presidential Campaign Support Committee. Our next speaker will be uh, Sheila Dilley. speak for Hyphen Mr. Ball, but anyway, I'm going to mostly read my speech. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of history. I was born during World War II with a V on the forehead, and people call me the Victory Baby. I got a lot of notoriety, and some thought it was a good thing, and other people out of a selfish greedy interest, like the military industrial complex, started trying to cause me a lot of trouble. I guess they thought I was not going to be president someday, so now I am. <laughs> And uh, so anyway, they started causing a lot of trouble. They started a lot of malicious gossip, and they started doing things like gassing me, and, and they're not causing, causing me all kinds of physical problems. But also, a lot of people believe that the government can uh, affect the weather. So uh, one thing I really want to do is get a hold of that technology and use it for good instead of evil. Anyway, I have a lot of energy, I have a lot of motivation, I have a lot of passion for trying to get this country to be like we taught the students that it should be. I have a Master's in Guidance and Counseling and about 50 hours beyond that. And so I know what we taught the students, I know what we learned, and this country needs to be a fair, just, good place where people can have a good life. And uh, health care and all of the things that we really need, and we need to stop the stupid war. Anyway, I hope you will join me in trying to get my name, um, or to get me on the ballot. It takes like a thousand uh, signatures in a lot of states to just get somebody, a candidate on the ballot, but then a lot more for the party. So if you, if you start immediately, I think we really could win this election, and I hope you'll help me. Thanks. Thank you, Sheila. Our next candidate uh, is Dan Imperato. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to address you this evening and participate in this uh, Green Party event. Um, this has been a great event for me because I'm a new Green Party person who has been invited to come and I'm learning a lot about your party and I really appreciate the Green Wise people and I believe that uh, I can be of great help to this party pertaining to the implementation of its desires and plans to make this earth better, to make our country a better place and to hold us socially responsible for the things that we've been abusing for all these years, including myself. I apologize for that. Uh, I'm from Revere, Massachusetts. I left home at a very young age. Um, I have been traveling around the world for 30 years. I am a very well-educated global man, self-made. I have uh, left at a young age, Revere, Massachusetts, uh, as an altar boy, asking the good Lord if he could provide me an education, a million dollars, and an ability to see the world. Well, I've traveled the world so much that my last business venture, was a $5 billion fiber optic subsea cable system connecting 70 countries around the world. In addition, I am a Knight of Bonaria, the largest humanitarian organization in the world. I am also a Knight of the Vatican, Pope John Paul knighted me. In addition, I'm a Knight of Malta, and I'm also a chaplain of New York City for LACA, the Latin African American Christian Church. The fact is that America the beginning of times, the 13 colonies, our uh, republic and our democracy and documents of democracy have been abused. And we all know that. Our government has taken advantage of us. They, they spend money like drunken sailors. I call George Bush checkbook George. I have been addressing each and every issue on my website. If you Google me, you will find out that I am one of the most looked look at person on the internet because I have been addressing issues from around the world for the last two and a half years. I launched my campaign two and a half years ago. I traveled the world for one year studying every political situation from Brazil to Mexico 
to the Palestinian uh, conflict, to Iraq, to our problems with Russia. I'm a very well-educated global guy who unconditionally has the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any presidential candidate in this country pertaining to foreign policy, social responsibility, and fiscal policy, because after all, I came from a part of the world with no money and no food, and I was just a poor boy from Revere, Massachusetts, and I'm up here standing in front of you all asking you for your nomination, because I believe that I can protect the people of the United States of America and their interests. The fact of the matter is, I'm on a mission. I've set aside my business affairs, I have a serious amount of people across this country and around the world supporting me. I'm a new Green member. I'm doing my best to learn the issues of the Green Party. And all I want is a fair chance. And with that, I deliver like dominoes, so we will see. I hope and pray that America allows me to share my voice and my wisdom. And I hope and pray that the American people vote me in. I'm going to need 40 million votes to get in the White House. So it's going to be a cross-culture of all parties and all support. And I'm going to work with everybody to deliver a message to America. I am not going to make decisions based upon a party affiliation. I'm going to make decisions based upon what's best for the people of the United States of America. Thank you very much, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Our next speaker is Mark Junjosi. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to, to come here at your cost and expense to, to, to fight for something that you believe in. I'm the founder of Angel Vision uh, and CEO of Angel Vision, perhaps the most recognized interactive media company in the United States. I'm also the founder of Reset America. Just before I came here, I was talking to my son, Josh, three years old, a cute kid. And as I was talking to him, I picked up a little wire tie like this. It wasn't green, this one is. I started twisting it like this, I was talking to my hand it to him. He did this and he started doing this. And he said, Daddy, you fixed it. <laughs> well, that might be funny, but sadly, that's exactly what's happened in Washington today. The two parties twist facts into feel-good legislation to make it appear as if they're fixing problems. Oh yeah, clever marketers. The Democrats and Republicans have convinced us that they're the only two choices and that voting for a third party is a wasted vote. Look, we're in a serious situation here. We have an economic disaster, an environmental disaster, a healthcare disaster, an immigration disaster, a foreign policy disaster. And the situation is the way it is today because the Democrats and Republicans profit by the status quo and it's ludicrous for us to believe them when they say they want change. Reset America is a specific plan to replace our destructive two-party system with third-party candidates for Congress and President in 2010 and 2012. And I believe we can do it. And we will. When two-thirds of the population says that the two-party system has failed, according to a Time Magazine call out today, it's time that we need to reset our government. Now, I've been in business for 25 years. When I started Angel Vision, sometimes we struggled. But my employees stuck with me because they believed in what I said, and in six years we became one of the, voted one of the best companies to work for in the state of Oregon. In other words, they knew what to expect. Well, we all know what to expect from the Democrats and Republicans. They twist facts, point fingers, avoid blame, blatantly lie to us about projections and data, create policies that benefit themselves over others, and steal from our kids while spending all their time fundraising and campaigning. They live in a separate class. In fact, if I use the same accounting principles that Congress uses in determining the debt, I'd be in jail for life for accounting fraud. Fortunately, there are valid solutions to these problems, many costing little or nothing at all. These are from respected scientists and people like you, but we're not going to see that with the two-party system. 
We have one election cycle left before these valid solutions are no longer possible, and America is added to the long list of failed empires. In business, it's quite common to hire a CEO from outside, and that's what we need. Someone who's not entrenched in our current political system, someone who's not embedded to special interest groups in exchange for campaign contributions. As Ben Franklin said, change can only come from one direction, outside. We also need to remember that during another time in our history when our country was deeply divided, we turned to another third party candidate, and that individual was Abraham Lincoln. If you ever said, I'll do anything for my kids, if you want America to be the country that we once knew, then become a patriot. Together, we can reset America. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Our next speaker is Jesse Johnson. being here. My name is Jesse Johnson. I'm from the mountain state of West Virginia, microcosm of the world, and that's an unfortunate thing in most cases. Environmentally, economically, we all struggle. I look around and I see a lot of people who may feel as I do. I'm a disillusioned man. I grew up in a time when I had a lot of hope. This country was showing so much hope. The young people were pouring into the streets, out of academia, and making changes in their world, forcing their parents and their grandparents to look at things in new ways. I look around today and I don't see that. I go to a rally and I don't see that. I go to a march. And I see all the same people, for the most part, that were out there in the 60s and early 70s, looking for equality, looking to make the changes that we all know are possible, that we all hoped for for the future of this great nation. It's really easy to be proud of a great nation. All you have to do is call it one. It's very different to be a great nation. And we all have that within us. But we are that nation. Now I know you're doing your part. But we have to inspire others. <laughs> More than half of us don't even bother to vote. While at the same time we're out spreading democracy like Jiffy or Peter Pan across the, the world at large. Democracy doesn't spread like peanut butter. It's organic. And when you, as a, a citizen of the United States of America, stand tall, take part, roll up your sleeves, then things happen. I've seen it happen before. I can't believe the country that I live in today. I can't believe habeas corpus has been suspended and that my Democratic Senator Rockefeller was the deciding vote. Sanctioning torture, suspending the Geneva Convention. How can this be right? How does this make us safer? I come from a long line of law officers. First thing that they taught me in observing them was that you look at the evidence and you sift through the evidence. And frankly, I hear a lot about impeachment. But it's a federal crime to destroy, remove, or tamper with evidence. Everything that we've been experiencing since George W. Bush took office, it's not new. We have a history of this in our country. But I've never seen it done this blatantly. And I've never seen such apathy among the people. Well, I stand before you a man who is ready, willing, and able to inspire people. I come from humble beginnings. I've run two statewide campaigns. 
and finishing the top of the nation in doing so. I ask for you to consider myself, the little old state of West by God, Virginia, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Our next speaker will be Jerry Kahn. everybody. My name is Jerry Kahn. I'm a Green Party member from the state of New York, and I'm a candidate for the nomination for President of the United States in 2008. I joined the Green Party in 2000, and primarily to volunteer for Native President. And of course, about 2.7 million Americans voted for Nader and the Green Party that year. In spite of the huge propaganda assault that was launched against us, we held our ground and we did the right thing in 2000. Let me repeat that. We did the right thing in 2000. <laughs> but now, today in 2007, we have a tremendous opportunity to come back to the forefront of American politics and to create a new birth of democracy in this country. The best way for us to do that is to support Ralph Nader, President of the United States in 2008. This would not only be the right thing to do, the moral thing to do, considering the vicious attacks that Ralph Nader's come under ever since 2000, and recognizing the fact, in my view, no, the fact, but no one has done more for the Green Party by far than Ralph Nader. Not only that, it would be the politically intelligent thing to do because of Nader's tremendous credibility, his tremendous reach, his tremendous recognizability. And I think that if we were to back Nader, and aggressively compete for every vote in every state, and for every vote in every state, and I think we win a lot more votes than we won in 2000, because people are more fed up in 2000. Thank you, Jerry. Our next speaker is Ken Mesplay. I'd like to start by thanking the Berks County Green Party, the Green Party of Pennsylvania. Organizing and hosting this meeting, my name is Kent Mesplay. I intend to be the Green Party nominee for president. My URL is mesplay.org. That's one against the Mesplay. Also, I have stickers that I've been passing around. So. I've been a member of the Green Party since 1995, and I hail from that heavily populated state that has not yet slipped off of the ocean, California. <laughs> Twelve years ago, at my first Green Party County Council meeting, held at a home in Point Loma, part of San Diego, I boldly announced that I was running for president. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me at the time, Greg Jan and Mike Feinstein and others had approached a Mr. Nader to be our representative and our advocate, building a viable alternative to the entrenched parties. When our county was polled, I raised my hand, affirming public citizen number one's candidacy. After all, I thought, Ken Nesplay is not a household name. Plus, I was only 33 at the time, and I wasn't even eligible. I understand the draw of a big name. In 2004, I gained support as a presidential candidate in the second round of voting at our national nominating convention in Milwaukee. Backstage, David Cobb came over and congratulated me when I won the entire Massachusetts delegation. I also remember how quiet it got in that big room. I am committed to this process of building our party. Now, I believe in an all-out run. I understand the concerns and limitations that seem to necessitate a smart state strategy. 
We now have candidates who are many shades of green. I urge this body to be generous, to have an open heart, and to be thankful for the candidates we now have, candidates who will advance at least two-thirds of the green message in their campaigns. Please, let's not fight about the remaining one-third, constituting our differences and our diversity. David Cobb did. I learned a lot from him. However, let me be clear. I want you to get behind my campaign and run with me. Right now, I'd even give up some time for you to applaud David Cobb, Pat Lamarge, Peter Camejo, and Ralph Nader. Enemy, but let's thank her. Let us move forward now together. The Green Party is the party of peace. One of my main platform issues is peace. Anyone ever hear Green Peace Party? I get that sometimes. I mention Green Party and I get Green Peace Party. Damn straight! Green Peace Party. <laughs> our communities, our nation, and our world deserve peace, not ongoing terrifying wars initiated by our administration based on poor intelligence. We can be proud that Greens courageously question the ward authorities in our calls for peace. My main platform plank is that, is that which has so far distinguished me from other candidates, namely that sustainability is a basic physical security issue. I need to wrap up now. Please talk to me. Um, green issues are in the news. Now's the time for the Green Party, and we are here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ken. And now we will hear from Sudanam, Hinomo, Kristen, Moyo, Washington. Oh.
Some key points about my platform, and it's going to be online, is one about voter access. I'm going to be volunteering in Arizona. I've already visited three states. I think it's critical if we take the lead, as we did in 04, with voter fraud. Folk know what I did for Matt Gonzalez in San Francisco. I believe if we take the lead with those things, we Greens will do what? Win. The who? Win. We gonna turn that White House what? Green. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Gail Parker. Thank you, Barbara. I want to thank all of the candidates here today and all of the state and local candidates all across the nation for running for office. I'm Gail Farrell Parker. I'm a retired Air Force officer. I'm a retired analyst. I'm a mother of three grown children, and I'm a grandmother of four. I'm also the state vice chair of the Independent Greens of Virginia. I traveled 50,000 Virginia miles last year, uh, campaigning on the ballot for U.S. Senate. We collected 70,000 petition signatures, put on the ballot eight congressional candidates. We spoke face to face with over one million Virginians. We need 435 Green Party candidates on the ballot in every U.S. House of Representatives district in 2008. We need 33 Green Party candidates on the ballot in every U.S. Senate race next year. The Green Party wins. The Greens win by participating. We get 468 Greens for House and Senate on the ballot. In the debate and on the de ballot, Greens help define the debate. That is winning. Winning is participating and failure, impossible. I ask each one of you here today in this room to get on the ballot in 2008. We need more trains, less traffic, cut dependency on foreign oil, stop the oil wars. For half of what this administration has stolen from Social Security, in a single year, we could already have built a nationwide high-speed maglev system. Like in Europe and Asia, we need trains as fast as planes, right down the middle of the interstate median. 44,000 Americans are killed every year on our roadways. Every year. 330,000 Americans are injured on our roads every year. Every week, a local teenager dies on our roads back home. The rail is safer for our families. The rail makes us all safer and more secure. We need a green government, fiscally conservative and socially responsible. Stop those no-bid, uncontested contracts at the Pentagon. <laughs> Install an auditable accounting system at the Pentagon. After 50 years and trillions of squandered tax dollars, it's time to stop the theft and money laundering at the Pentagon. We need to be able to count the money. And we must stop the crony privatization of civil service. We want to stop the $100 billion of our tax dollars flowing to those black water mercenaries. <laughs> and finally, uh, there have been several mentions of a big name candidate. Now, a lot of people say that a big name would bring a lot of people. Now, Michael Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg is a big name. Bloomberg is pro-choice and pro-gay marriage. Shared values are important. 
To win ballot status in Virginia, we need for 10% at a statewide race, and Michael Bloomberg is now polling at 10% in Virginia. Be seen being green. Get on the ballot now. Thank you, Gail. Our next speaker is Joe Schreiner. Hi everyone, my name is Joe Schreiner and my constituency is in the front row here in the house. And we just inherited Kermit, so I gotta figure that's a sign of some sort. Yeah. I've been running for president for the last three election cycles. A little vignette from Campaign 2000, a reporter from the Port Charlotte News in order to test my foreign affairs knowledge, asked me who the leader of China was. I looked at her and I told her I know it's going to be 100% right. I said, the leader of China is a Chinese guy. <laughs> she looked at me and she said, like, is that your final answer? And I laughed and I said, yeah. And that appeared in the story the next day. And you got to believe, three-fourths of people in Port Charlotte who didn't know who the leader of China was either, was reading that newspaper article going, I would have said that. <laughs> I told the Duluth News in Minnesota that I'm just your average Midwestern parent. So why would an average Midwestern parent run for president? Because I'm a concerned average Midwestern parent. I told the Finley Courier newspaper in Ohio recently during a campaign stop that I'm concerned about a world where Arctic ice is melting, polar bears are drowning, and my kids are inheriting an environmental catastrophe. That is if there's going to be a world at all. I told the Cortez Colorado News that I'm concerned about a country where little children daily try to dodge hunger needles and bullets in the inner cities of our country, and I'm concerned about a world where 24,000 people starve to death every day. My wife and I have been so concerned, in fact, that we quit our professions and took to the roads of America to look for answers to these. We have traveled 200,000 miles in the last 15 years looking for those answers, and we found them. We found them in the Prada, of Pennsylvania, in High Springs, Florida, in Monterey, California. We found those answers. What's more, for the past eight years we have traveled 80,000 miles campaigning and getting those answers out in hundreds of talks on 2,000 newspapers, 175 regional network news shows. What we are doing in effect is we are planting seeds. Often those seeds are green seeds. That is seeds for environmental change, seeds for peace, Seeds for economic justice, each very much in line with Green Party principles. And seeds very much in line with not only saving the planet, but creating a new kind of prosperity, a green prosperity for all. Now, and I can't pronounce your name. I'd have to be a linguist. BP, if you forget. Yeah, there you go. She's talking about turning the White House green. And this is our campaign promise. We're going to put solar panels on the top of the White House. There'll be a wind turbine. We're turning the front yard into a permaculture. And we are going to sell organic tomatoes through the front fence in order to spend down the national debt. Tonight. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Joe. Our next speaker is Kat Swift. I'm glad that this year the women are standing for themselves and not another candidate. 
If you remember in 2004, all the women candidates spoke for another candidate and not for themselves. I think women are standing up for change and being willing to put themselves out there to be candidates. Um, I came to the Green Party in 99 because I finally found a party that's values. Reflected the social change that I thought we needed when I was born and before that. And we've seen, I've seen very little progress in my lifetime. I'm 34, I'll be 35 next year. And I wonder why, why the movements of Dr. King and the Civil Rights Movement, the women's movement, all went away around the time that I was born. Um, but then I found the Green Party's platform and I did a lot of research. I checked out all the parties. I wanted to make sure that I was doing the right thing. And I've worked tirelessly for the last seven years on making sure that the Green Party in Texas stays on the ballot when we can get on the ballot, that we get candidates, that we support candidates, and that those candidates espouse green values and promote the building of the party and promote other candidates. Because when the presidential candidates come to our town and they support all the other candidates we have locally, it adds to the coverage and it adds to the unknownness of candidates. And having a big name candidate isn't necessarily better than not having a big name. I ran a very, very successful campaign against the wife of a political icon in my town this year. Um, many of you may know Henry Cisneros, he was the HUD director under Clinton. I ran against his wife. I got 30% of the vote with a last minute campaign. <laughs> and no name recognition at all. And that was because we had been doing the groundwork. We had been talking to people. I've been talking to people about running for president for the last I don't know, eight years, I guess. Um, this is the first year I'll be old enough. So, um, and my friends and my family have been the ones pushing me to this. This was never something I would ever even remotely considered I'd be standing up here as a candidate. It's more been family and friends and friends here as well pushing me up into leadership positions and making sure that women and youth, even though I'm not young enough to be youth anymore, um, <laughs> I was young as you could get for a presidential candidate. Um, pushing us into leadership positions and making sure that we are empowered as women and as young people to stand up for what we believe and stand up for what changes we want to see. The continuation of the radical changes that we really needed 30 years ago and we need them more now. And we need to make sure that we put forth a campaign that's going to espouse those values and successfully grow the party and change the world. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, and I want to thank all the candidates for holding firmly to your um, limits. Now, uh, we will start with our questions. Okay, our first question is, if you are the Green Party candidate for president, how will your campaign build the party? There's a second part to that question. Will you accept all Green Party ballot lines that are always? Okay, our first <coughs> candidate is Jesse Johnson. I'd, I'd like a little clarification on the question. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Could you repeat that, please? If you are the Green candidate nominee for president, right. how will your campaign build the party? Do you want the second part? It was the second part that stopped me. Yeah. Okay. Will you accept all the Green Party ballot lines that all of you? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> To part two, absolutely, yes. Um, the first part, to me, is the key, and I touched upon it a little bit before. And, um, you know, there was so much hope in this country when I was growing up. You know, we landed on the moon in 1969. 
1970, everyone really believed that anything was possible. Well, it was. Richard Nixon had a lot in store for us, and so did the Bushes, and, and on and on. But also another thing that happened during that time period had to do with the VISTA workers and, and the Peace Corps. And there are so many groups. I want to leave a groups in every state, in every urban area, and on every mountaintop that are ready, willing, and able to get activated and to improve their communities from the bottom up. You won't find, uh... okay. Thank you, Jesse. Okay, uh, Joe, Trina, then we'll go to you next. If you are the Green Party candidate, how will your campaign build the party, and will you accept all Green Party ballot lines? When I mentioned earlier, we've been in a tremendous amount of media over time, and I think a key to the Green Party right now is for as much information as possible to get out in as short a period of time. I think there needs to be a tremendous thrust for open forums and towns, talking about what you guys stand for. Because I can tell you, on the street as we were coming here, I'd say, I'm going to Green Party convention, and what I'd get more often than not was, well, what does the Green Party stand for? Now. If you got that education going on in a parallel track with a 9-11 that happens in the environment, which I think is going to happen sooner than later, the synergy between both of those are going to put you guys on the map in a tremendous way. And so, that's what we see. Yeah, and I would accept all of that one. So. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Joe. Jared Ball will be the next. Uh, we'll answer this question next. If you are the Green Party candidate, how will your campaign build the party and will you accept all Green Party ballot lines? Uh, yes, the second part is easy to answer, yes, and we would actually look to ex extend those, expand those. Uh, yeah. uh, just notably, uh, you know, we have to address the fact that this society still runs on a system of enslavement, uh, otherwise known as a prison industrial complex, and we have got to be able to address that as a fundamental concern, and as I mentioned in my earlier statements, part of our platform would be specifically to reach out to those communities who are eligible to vote but don't, and they largely don't because nobody's addressing their concerns in a manner that reaches them. Uh, when I mention myself as being connected to the hip-hop community, I mean that in terms of artists and also academics. Uh, I am a, a, an academic. Uh, I teach and I practice journalism in this, in this style, and I work and give these presentations and extend Green Party principles uh, already. So we would, be, we would uh, just have a greater ability to do that, uh, and we would uh, dramatically, because the crew I roll with, wherever we go, we dominate. So we would, we would uh, without question, increase our uh, uh, numbers uh, uh, and members without question. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Kent Mesplay will answer the question next. Kent, will you, uh, if you are the Green Party head. Thank you. One of the struggles of being a Green is to achieve and then maintain ballot status. Uh, the system is basically gamed against alternative parties. Um, one thing I have in mind is to help Arizona with their ballot access, um, perhaps next weekend or the, the one after. Um, I have three-day weekends working. Um, if you go to mesplay.org, as of this afternoon, I believe I have a PayPal link. I actually went up in the middle of the afternoon and uh, uh, put a little pressure on, on someone. So, small donations, even a dollar a month from, say, 20 to 30,000 Greens nationwide, would enable me to take more time off my job as a, uh, an inspector for the um, County of San Diego. I'm an air quality inspector. I already have three-day weekends. That's what I did last time around when I ran. I worked all week and then I campaigned on the weekends. So as money comes in, I can expand those four or five-day weekends. And yes, I would absolutely be honored to accept all Green Party ballot lines. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Dan Imperato, the question is yours. If you are the Green Party candidate, how will your campaign build the party, and will you accept all Green Party ballot lines? 
Second uh, question, yes, and I would be more than happy to extend and help as much as I can to increase ballot access, because that's the way I, well, reason why I'm here. Uh, I'm committed to bring 40 million people to vote for me to win the presidency. I have the wisdom, the strength, and the relationships around this country to bring in a lot of money, a lot of capital for this party if I'm the nominee. And I can tell you that I deliver like dominoes. I'm a man of my word, and I do what I say I'm going to do. But without ballot access, there's nothing for me to talk about. So if you nominate me, I can tell you that I will do my very best with my conviction, my credibility, and my relations around this country and around this world to break the divide of the Democrats and the Republicans and to put this third party, this green third party, in the White House. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. And I have been asked to ask the candidates to stand when you answer. They can't see very well out there. So from now on, uh, when, you, when you make your answer, please stand. Cass Swift, you will be answering next. If you are the Green Party candidate, okay, she's got it. If I'm a candidate, I will do what I've been doing for the last seven years, continually talk about being green and wearing my buttons all the time and make sure that people link my campaign to the Green Party because it's not really about me, it's about the party and about the values that we espouse in our platform and our issues. And so basically it's just going to be a continuation of talking to people, making sure that we are out on the street and talking to potential voters and making sure that we put the correlation between the Green Party and my campaign. And I will accept all ballot lines and actively work from now until the nomination process and after if they're more petitioning than to make sure that all states can get on the ballot can. Thank you. And let's see if I'm as lucky next time. Sudanam, Kinomo, Kristen, Moyo, Wasika, Curry. Oh, 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 oh. Do you want me to read it? Oh, no, that's okay. Yes, I'll accept all these bad lines because this is a historic run. So yes, I think that would give us some notoriety. I, as a strategist, of course, have a five-point plan that would say to us Greens that one, we need to rebrand and retake what green means. You know, everybody's green, but they're not going the next step, okay? So strategically speaking, we can rebrand what green means, and that means political green party, the real change. Secondly, as I said earlier, we can do ballot access, which I also also go in Arizona too. But each each green has to become an ambassador of change. We individually have to move our families, our churches, our mosques, whoever we're connected to, so that each one of us is responsible for like a thousand votes. Because we need, you know, ballot access and the federal funding. The second the third point I'll talk about is, as a historian, historical preservation. What if every state party celebrated their anniversary? I'm going to stop. <laughs> Jerry Kahn, it's your question next. Do you want to repeat it? No, thanks. Um, in the event that I become the nominee, which is provisional, of course, and problematic. Um, in that event, second question, yes, of course I would take all, uh, all Green Party ballot lines. I'm not even sure why that's a question. Um, maybe somebody can explain that to me later. Uh, the Green Card proposal is one way to do it. Uh, Howie Hawkins of New York has put forward this idea of having, you, you get out and organize and you get people to get $36 to buy a Green Card, you raise money for the National Party, and you get people to use that uh, uh, as an apportionment mechanism to find out how many people that state deserves at the National Convention. You also have thank you, uh, you, an impeachment drive, a big impeachment drive, impeach Bush and change. Say it over and over again all the time. Get a lot of people angry hopping in. You get recruitment of local candidates, just keep bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up, meeting with local, local people all the time and encouraging them to run. And finally, taking responsibility for the election of 2000. 
and uh, basically letting people know that no, we're not going to apologize for it, and yes, we mean business this time. Of that unit? Do you need the question repeated? No, I don't think so. Um, I would work very hard to try to get um, on the to get ballot access and uh, focus on the ten values of the Green Party, which are all based on justice, like Nader, you know, kept on saying, and his ideas are wonderful. So that's what I would do, and of course, take the, you know, I would be, I'd be glad to accept the, the ballot. Um, <clears throat> uh, I will accept all ballot lines and use the libertarian uh, ballot lines to supplement those that the Green Party does not get. I know that this idea is very popular among some of you. It's it's not popular among some of you as well. We'll have to see how this shakes out. It's going to be a crazy year between now and the National Convention. Um, it, it, it's um, very unpredictable what's going to happen over the next year. We intend to get 5 to 7 percent of the popular vote at the next election if we get one or two of these nominations. Now, the Libertarian nomination is before the Green Party nomination, so you're kind of lucky in the sense that you'll know the facts and everything before the decisions are made. But uh, that's what this is about. And if I get my way, all of my fellow candidates here will be in the House and the Senate by 2010 or by 2012. I want to be sure everyone had a chance to ask another question. Should yeah. not? Yay. Right, Yay. Okay. <laughs> well, the short answer to, to the question is we would grow the Green Party the way we have grown the independent Greens in Virginia, by encouraging all the Greens to get on the ballot, to stand on the ballot. We would also pull in the rail advocates because we advocate very strongly for more trains and less traffic. We will also pull in the in independents, and we also try to appeal to those folks who feel that they don't have anyone else to vote for on the ballot. So we just roll up our sleeves and work, and some people say that uh, getting ballot status is the campaign, and we have 17 states that we need ballot status on in addition to the 19 uh, green lines already. And of course, I'm green, so I would accept the green line. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to make you this announcement before I uh, take the, give you the last question. Um, I've been asked to announce that the hearings on the apportionment of date of, of delegates for the 2000 convention will be held tomorrow at between 10 and 11.30 at the small room at the front of the ballroom. Understand this is what they're talking about. So we're talking about the hearings on the apportionment of the delegates for the 2008. If, if I may, I have been told that they'll be in the Madison room and that there's a wedding going on here. I just have to confirm that to uh, distribute signs first thing in the morning to clarify that. Thank you. Dan did not answer the second part of the question that he would 
would would like for him to do that. Sorry to take your time again, but I didn't get a chance to stand up, and I want you to know that I grew up streetwise, but now I'm greenwise. You'll notice on my website that I started my campaign as an independent. I then uh, looked for the nomination of the Reform Party. I hired Ross Perot's lawyers to work for me. I subsequently embraced the Libertarian Party. I like the principles. I'm here to shrink the government, restore our freedom and our principles, and I'm a man of principle. But today I want you all to know that I found a new party, and I really like the Green Wise Party. And I want you all to know that no matter what party I win the nomination for, whether it's my independent status, or the Libertarian Party, or the Reform Party, or the Green Party, I will deploy Green Party principles because I am a green person. And you will see that my presentation will be adapted to what you people are all about. So just give me a little bit of time. I think you might like what you see. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry, man, that I didn't get a clear answer to that. You will employ the Green Party uh, principles. We want to know if you will take the ballot line because we're concerned about holding those. I already answered those. Okay. I said yes. You said yes. Very well. I'm a new member. Okay. All right. Our question this time, what are your green credentials? What are your green credentials? How long have you been involved with the Green Party? And we're starting with Sudanam Kinamo President for your Thank you. I've been a Green for five years. I've held national, state, and local positions. I'm a real Green. When I made that break with the Democrats, I meant it. I ain't going back. Um, I'm a founding member of the Black Caucus. I'm a founding member of the National Black Caucus, of our state party, the Black Caucus, the People of Color Caucus. I'm the pushy women to run in 08 in our state, Laura Wells, Governor Hoo Hoo campaign. Um, I'm active. I'm active. You know, volunteer campaigns, work phone calls, emailing crazy people, doing all kinds of stuff. I'm a real green, and the green that I know our 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 strengths and I know our weakness. I'm not trying to learn nothing about being green. I can teach what green is, and that's Stacey and Curry, VP Oil. Um, I started, I found the Greens in 99 when I moved back to Texas, and I started petitioning as soon as possible, and I've been active ever since. I've held local, state, and national office. I'm co-chair, I'm co-spokesperson for the National Women's Caucus. I am the outgoing co-chair for the state Green Party. I'm currently co-chair of the local county. I've worked on media. I've been the media person in our state and city for a long time, seven years. Um, I mean, it's been a long time and I've done, mostly, basically all of my free time has gone to the Green Party or related campaigns like public financing or my city council campaign, which was nonpartisan. And, but that's pretty much what I've been doing in my spare time for the last seven years. And you're not obligated to take all of your minute if you don't need to. Um, Mike, you go in is the next speaker. Mike, do you need a repeat? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, I've spent my career helping companies develop sustainable business practices. I pioneered the concept of holistic management. Uh, I founded Reset America to help displace the two-party system about five years ago. Um, and, uh, and I helped uh, uh, support and vote for Ralph Nader in 2000 and 2004, uh, but I didn't really become an official Green member until recently. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Gail Parkinson. I've been a Green since before I even knew what a green, it meant to be a green. 
and I've been a dues paid member of the Green Party for the last five years. I've been running for office for the last three years. Uh, I'm the Vice Chair of the Independent Greens of Virginia. I joined the Green Party registered in June of 2000. I worked on, or I volunteered for Ralph Nader's campaign in 2001. I ran for city council in New York City. Uh, in 2002, I stood on a ballot line for New York State Assembly, uh, volunteered for our campaign for, uh, for governor. In 2000, uh, 2002, some of us started up something called the Green Party Office in Manhattan, which was something that we really need in the city of 8 million people. And we kept it going as a more or less an independent committee, uh, not something of the state party. And uh, uh, we raised about $60,000 to pay the rent and the phone bill over a short period, uh, period of four years. Uh, in 2004, I uh, was a delegate to the National, uh, the National Convention in 2005. I ran again to the city council in 2006. I got about 3,000 signatures as a petitioner for our state party. And 2007, here we are. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, another announcement. Uh, the International Forum at 7 o'clock tonight downstairs in the Madison Room. It'll be very interesting. Okay, our next speaker is uh, Dan Imperato. I already said that I was a new Green, and I plan on bringing 40 million people to my campaign. And I can tell you that I will polish myself to deliver your message to the people of the United States of America and the world. I am a Christian man, I'm pro-life, and I'll stay that way. So some of the issues in the Green Party you may not like me, but I'm a pro-life man, and I'm a Christian. But I do believe in fiscal policy, and I believe in uh, fixing the train wreck in Washington, D.C. The spending that's going on is out, outrageous. Checkbook, George, I call it. Anyway, give me a chance, and uh, I may bring a lot of people to this party. God will see. Thank you very much. I've been a, I've been a Green Party member since 525 this afternoon. I went online down in that little room where the computer is down here, went to the Ohio Green Party and just filled it up. I was asked to come here with an open mind and I have and I've listened to you guys and I've read literature before and I sat in on a meeting back in Bluffton, Ohio and I'll tell you, you seem to me to be very earnest. Yes, we are earnest. As far as the Green Deal goes, even though I haven't been an official Green Party member too long, I have been very green in spirit. Much to my wife's consternation, we put a sign up in our front yard that said, Kyoto Protocol Home Zone. We bicycle everywhere in Cleveland, we turn the air conditioning off, we wear sweaters in the winter, and, we, and then when I'm in a White House, same deal. Uh, well, I, coming from West Virginia, I first turned green at about the age of three when I tried my dad's chewing tobacco. <laughs> but seriously, beyond that, uh, coming from the Canal Valley in West Virginia, the, the home of the Union Carbide and its benefactor, Boop. Bhopal and uh, mountaintop removal. Uh, I got involved in environmentalism at a very young age while I was still in grade school and I maintained that lifestyle throughout my life and that's why I would later you know joined the mountain party when the mountain party became which was basically based on a template of the green party itself. Uh, our special emphasis though was the destruction of the mountains in West Virginia for the energy that we all consume. 
So, um, soiling the, the waters that, that we need when less than 2% of the water on Earth is potable, half of it's already um, been tainted. But, thank you. In the video that we saw earlier, where Ralph was saying, go, we go, I was in the audience. We had been saying, go, Ralph, go, and he said, go, we go. So I've been registered since 1995. I was elected to the Green Party of San Diego County Council June 6th of last year. I'm also a delegate to this national body, which is one of the reasons why I'm here. I was a member of the communications, actually a co-chair of the communications committee back in late 1995, and I helped put on a press conference for Ralph Nader. And um, also, I was appointed back then to the county council of San Diego as treasurer. So yes, also I grew up in a rainforest. That's pretty darn green. <laughs> as far as uh, ideology since I guess I was a child and um, I got really involved in 2000 working for Ralph Nader. I went to the Green Convention in Denver and I also helped with his campaign in uh, 2004 uh, trying to help get him uh, ballot access. Thank you, Sheila and Jared Uh, I, uh, I joined the D.C. State of Green Party in, I think, 2002 or 2003, uh, something like that. And I um, am relatively new to electoral politics and, uh, and whether in terms of supporting that as a mode for change or being involved so directly myself. But coming from a, uh, uh, let's see, coming from a household that was half uh, anti-Zionist, Jewish, Palestinian Jews kicked out of uh, then Palestine for breaking the Zionist uh, <laughs> orthodoxy code, uh, and a black radical uh, socialist labor organizer, I believe in uh, doing things in an unorthodox way. As C. Wright Mill said, common sense is more common than sense. And uh, that's why I wanted to join the party in the first place, and that's why I wanted to seek your nomination for president so we can have a very unorthodox campaign that would be fun and bring people into it and provide radical space for the truly radical people that populate this country. Thank you very much. Thank you.